Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm in this 2023 Toyota Highlander XLE Hybrid All-Wheel Drive. This was my rental for the weekend. I got this with five miles on it and it currently has 720. So I've put about 715 miles on it. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my impressions on what it's been like to live with over the weekend. So let's go ahead and get this started. So this 2023 Toyota Highlander is finished in blueprint blue. And it looks pretty good. Not too bad. Highlanders stayed pretty much relatively unchanged styling wise for quite a few years now. Has 18 inch wheels wrapped in Toyo 843 open country tires. Overall, I've enjoyed my time in this this weekend. Do get LED headlights, some fog lights here as well. Go ahead and check out the back. This interior is graphite soft text leather. Let's have a couple captain's chairs back here. Let's go ahead and climb in. Pretty easy ingress and egress inside this vehicle. I wish the doors would open wider, but that's all right. Back here, you got plenty of room for passengers. Got a couple cup holders here and these armrests fold up. Your climate, a couple USB-C ports down here for charging, a couple map pockets. Back here, it's pretty comfortable. Um, even headroom wise, I got about four inches of headroom. So really not bad at all. You even get peasant blockers, AKA sunshades, which isn't bad. That's really nice to see. Let's go ahead and check out the dash here. Toyota finally updated their infotainment system. This one has the optional 12.3 inch screen in the front. Looks very nice. I'll get into that when we get up there. Let's go ahead and pop into third row. This is a three row SUV. All right, to get to the third row, you can either go through the center there or you can fold the armrest up, fold this forward, fold this forward again, and then push this forward a bit and then climb back there. I'll climb in there for the video. A little bit of a high step. Let's see if I can get this, probably can't get this up, but as you can see, you know, if you scoot this forward just a little bit, it's not too bad. I would be cramped back here as an adult. And uh, these seats, um, they do recline a little bit more and they're pretty hard. Um, you know, if I was a kid, it would be fine. But as an adult, it is a little bit cramped, if I'm being honest. This does have a power rear lift gate as well, which is nice. As you can see with the third row up, you don't quite get as much room back here, but with uh, you pushing up the lever like this, um, does this not have power? It's pretty easy to get these to fold down. Interesting. Well, it was kind of easy to get these to fold down and now they're not. Okay, anyways, now with the third row folded down, um, you do get plenty of room back here to put lots of luggage. Then under here, you do get some extra storage as well as it has, a, I think, a full-size spare underneath the car that you can, uh, you know, wheel it or uh, winch it down and use it that way. Cargo net there. So pretty nice. Under the hood here is the 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder hybrid. It's in a lot of Toyota products. I think the RAV4 and the Sienna, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, makes about a combined like 250-ish horsepower, 35 MPG city, 35 highway, and it's made it to a CVT. Up front here, you do get dual power seats that are heated as well. You do get a leather wrapped steering wheel that is kind of hard as a concrete. Um, you know, when you drive this thing for a long period of time, just gripping this uh, is not the most comfortable steering wheel I've ever used. Do get a nice gauge cluster here with a digital screen in the middle. Once again, we got this 12.3 inch touchscreen, which is nice to see this very nice uh, updated infotainment from Toyota. They were very lacking on this compared to the competitors. Um, and it's nice to see them finally catch up. But the reverse camera is probably the re worst reverse camera I have ever seen out of any new car today. Um, I thought the challenge or the Dodge Charger Hellcat I reviewed was pretty bad, but this is like straight out of 2000. I don't know, 10. Uh, it would have nice to have been able to get like a, you know, a clear camera that fills up the entire screen or a 360 camera. Um, I'm not sure if that's available in the upper trim levels. Down here, you do get some wireless charging and some storage over here, a couple cup holders, some drive modes, parking brake, EV mode, trail mode, traction control, brake holes. It's nice to see an actual gear shifter instead of buttons. 
And you do get this center console here with a removable cargo tray. It's pretty deep in the 12 volt outlet down there. It's really cool how this slides. Um, it's kind of nice if your passenger needs to get in here and your arms on here, they can open it without you having to move your arm, which is nice. Do get a pretty decent sized glove box. And this one comes with a sunroof and a sunglasses holder with a kid monitor there um, that kind of hangs down. It doesn't go up any farther than that. Don't know why. Do get a auto dimming mirror with home link. That's nice to see. And a illuminated visor mirror that's kind of small. All right, let's go ahead and take this for a spin and I'll give you some impressions of what it's like to drive while I drive. One thing I don't like about this infotainment system is it basically gives you this ad here um, that um, pops up every single time you start the car. Unless you subscribe to this Drive Connect that Toyota provides that uh, provides the latest route and location guidance with cloud navigation, destination assist, and intelligent assistant. Uh, I think this just pops up. Um, not quite sure if you can get rid of it unless you subscribe, um, but we can go ahead and go to this vehicle option and go to the energy flow and see how the energy flows in this thing while we drive. I do like this infotainment. It doesn't lag hardly at all. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are pretty quick to connect. Um, it, do has, it has wireless Apple uh, CarPlay and Android Auto as well. And uh, yeah, I just like that. Just overall a very good system out of Toyota here. This vehicle has a really nice ride to it. It's pretty comfortable um, on long road trips. I took this to a, a trip to Indianapolis this weekend, which is why I put so many miles on it. I took my parents to see the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and uh, they loved it. Uh, they said it was very comfortable back there. The road noise is not bad at all. And uh, yeah, it's just an overall pretty comfortable family hauler um, for your kids. Or you know, if you want to take some people on a road trip, um, it's really not that bad at all. This hybrid powertrain is really efficient. Um, you know, I was averaging uh, pretty close to 80 miles an hour um, all the way down to Indianapolis. And I got 35 and a half. Uh, the gauge cluster was reading 34.8. Um, so we actually, you know, doing the math, beat the what the gauge cluster was, to, was saying. And right now I'm getting 32.6, but I would wager to say it's probably at 33 um, coming back up from Indianapolis. So very impressive numbers out of this thing for its size and the people that were in it and really no complaints there at all. It's got plenty of power. Uh, the you know transmission, you know the CVT is pretty smooth. Um, it does whine a little bit, uh, but I mean that's that's a CVT for you. And I don't know, it just it just gets the job done. It's a very efficient and a family hauler. Gets up to speed relatively decent. Um, you know, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but you know, driving it to Indianapolis, I didn't really run into any times where I needed more power than what this puts out. Um, I was pretty content with it. Now, one thing I didn't like about this vehicle is the brake pedal. The brake pedal is kind of weird. Like the first inch or two is regen before it gets to the actual brake. And you can definitely feel the crossover from that. Uh, it's not like other vehicles, like, Hon like the Honda CRV, for example, um, where it's just like a super smooth transition. Um, you definitely feel uh, the transition between the two. And it's not the most confidence inspiring, especially in traffic uh, when you have to come to a stop relatively quickly. It's nice to see that these mirrors are defrostable as well. I love having defrostable mirrors here in the northern Ohio in the winter. It makes it easy when the car is outside and you can actually see where you're going. It does have a nice dual note horn as well. Now this vehicle as tested is about $48,000. And in my humble opinion, I don't quite think it's worth that much money. Um, it's, it's a nice vehicle, don't get me wrong. I really, really enjoy my time in this and I specifically rented this vehicle um, from Toyota. I paid for this with my own money. It, but I just don't feel like this is worth 
forty-eight thousand dollars. It, it's crazy how it's crazy how expensive these vehicles are getting. I remember when XLE was like the top trim, and now there's three trims above this one. There is the XSE, there is the Limited, and then there is the Platinum. And I think the Platinum's right around sixty thousand dollars. And you know, like I said, don't get me wrong, this is a very nice vehicle, but uh, in my humble opinion, I don't quite think it's worth that much money. Now this does have Toyota's Safety Sense suite built into it. I actually had a couple issues over the weekend. The lane tracing assist would not work for me at all. Um, you know, I tried you know rebooting the vehicle and all that stuff, and it's it just didn't seem to work at all. You know, I would press it, and it would not keep me in my lane. It would let me drift out of my lane or over to the right. Um, not quite sure why this doesn't work, but I wasn't really impressed with the lane tracing assist in the 2021 RAV4 that I reviewed a few weeks ago uh, when I was actually in Indianapolis then. And this actually s suffers the same issues as the 2021 did um, as far as the adaptive cruise control being one mile an hour under than what you actually set it at. Um, you know, let's say you're at 77 miles an hour, it would only go 76. Um, and also, the following distance resets every time you restart the car. Um, so you got to keep that in mind when you're into it and you want to use adaptive cruise control um, that you're going to have to reset the following distance every time you start the car up. Now I did not find this adaptive cruise control system to be all that great. I did find it to be a little kind of lagging compared to the traffic in front of you. It wasn't predicting far enough, at least for my comfort. It didn't matter what um, following distance it was. And I really had to just, you know, use the brakes myself um, in traffic to not rear end the car in front of me. But if you do not want to use adaptive cruise control, all you have to do is press and hold on the cruise control button and it'll switch to constant speed control, which is just your regular cruise control and you can use it normally. I don't particularly care for adaptive cruise in general unless I'm in traffic. So seeing that I can use the old-fashioned cruise control and not be locked out of it or anything is a very nice thing to have. Now this digital display in the center is very nice, but I do wish it was a little bit brighter. When the sun shines at certain angles, you cannot see a single thing in that center stack, which is okay because it has physical gauges on the left and right, which is nice, um, but I do wish that was brighter. You do get a ton of menus in here as well, um, your audio, tire pressure, I mean, they give you, um, you know, I could go over everything in here, but I mean, it's pretty standard. What all the manufacturers offer, um, it's pretty much the same as everybody else's. Now, as far as handling goes, um, I did hear the tires starting to bark there. Uh, it, it's an SUV. Um, it's a three-row SUV. It's not going to canyon carve. Um, it, you know, it, it handles like a three-row SUV would. Um, nothing stellar there. Nothing really sporty about it. Um, does the job just fine. Now, one thing I do like about this vehicle is the steering is super easy. You can literally steer this with one finger. Um, it is super light, you know, having a steering wheel that has a very heavy weight on a long trip, it can get kind of cumbersome on your arms, and it's nice to see that this drives pretty easy. I really like Toyota's hybrid systems. They are really nice and, and refined for the most part, and they're smooth, efficient, reliable. This 2.5 liter combined with these hybrid systems I've seen go up past 200,000, 300,000 miles with no issues at all and I just enjoy it. It's a really nice system. Um, Toyota's basically perfected the hybrid um, powertrain in all their vehicles, and I got really no complaints there at all. This is a really nice vehicle, guys. Um, if, you need, if you're in the market for a nice three-row SUV that is gonna get you and your family around town safely, reliably, and efficient, um, this is a good vehicle for you um, for you to buy, especially with this new infotainment. It is awesome. Um, you know, I really wish they would do something about that backup camera, but I really, really, really like this optional 12.3 inch screen. Um, Apple CarPlay works really well, and I think that's a real big selling point um, for this vehicle.
You do get a couple drive modes down here. You get Eco, which basically just kind of, you know, I think adjusts the climate control system to where it's more eco-friendly. Um, adjusts your throttle response where it's more eco-friendly for you to get the best efficiency in normal. And then you also get Sport. Um, I just like to leave it in normal and drive this thing like it normally is. I kind of find drive modes in general, not just this car specifically, but drive modes to be kind of gimmicky. When you push this vehicle the engine does get kind of nasally um, but I mean it's okay it's smooth um, it's powerful enough and uh, it's it's not too terribly bad this car has pretty decent blind spots in each corner um, so you do kind of got to you know really pay attention and look over your shoulder to make sure anybody's not there or you know pay attention to the blind spot monitoring um, but it's nice to see that blind spot monitoring is equipped in this vehicle I mean, look how light the steering is, guys. One finger. I'll use one finger here. It is so light. It's crazy. Let's do a quick turning radius demonstration. Let's see if I can steer this with my pinky, which I can, which is nice. All right, the steering wheel is full lock. This vehicle is pretty maneuverable. I had no problems with it at all. And I just can't get over how light the steering is. All right, final impressions. Great three-row SUV, great option for your family. Reliable, safe, it's gonna hold its value even though it's you know on the more expensive side. Um, I'm, I'm super glad that this infotainment is up to standard here. I'm really happy for Toyota. Um, oh, one more thing. This surface here and this surface here is kind of hard. So when you're driving down the road for longer periods of time, um, this does get kind of, it does kind of hurt your elbows. There's really not a good place to rest your arm without it hurting you. All right, guys, I think that covers just about everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned as a lot more vehicles are coming soon. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well, at Paul's Place YT for some additional content and some behind the scenes. Yeah, this is really nice, guys. All right, we'll go ahead and see you in the next video. Take care.